welcome back. I have another book to talk about, and um, much more quickly than I was expecting to. But here we are. <laughs> so today's is actually a short story collection. Um, it's called Crick Crack, and it's about Haitian short stories. I mean, they're not like a mythology thing or anything like the Beneath the Moon that I was reading, but the author is at least Haitian American, I think. I, I'm bad and I didn't look this stuff up. But anyways, it, it talks about how when Haitians tell a story, they start with this crick and then they answer with crack. And that's like how they do like their storytelling thing. It kind of sounds like their version of like once upon a time kind of thing. So it is stories. It is just a collection. It's by one author. Um, but it was a really cool collection at the same time because the stories themselves had connections to each other so in a lot of ways you're sort of traveling through time it feels like I'm not quite sure what the time period it starts at is since I don't know Haitian history very well but like 1800s maybe really early 1900s and then it moves up to basically the modern day by the end with the stories and several of them kind of reference each other and characters within them so they can all be read as like standalone but they do have kind of that interweaved and connected connectedness to them that I thought was really cool and it kind of made it feel like you were looking at like a single like family line across like the generations and it was a really cool concept and a really cool execution and I really loved it and I'm really glad I read it. Um, I want to talk about some of like my favorites within it as well so let's do that. Um, one of the first standouts within this collection for me was called A Wall of Fire Rising or just Wall of Fire Rising, no, A Wall of Fire <laughs> Rising, because that article matters so much. Um, but this one features a young married couple with their young son, I think he's about nine or something, living in Haiti, and they live in like a shanty town, so they don't have much money or anything, and their son gets a part in a play, and they're excited and trying to coach him through like his lines and things. And then the ending of this story, <laughs> I just bawled. <laughs> it's something really tragic happens at the end and oh, I, I just bawled. It, it was a very impactful story for me. It was a short story because they're all short stories. It's a short story collection, uh, but I was so connected to those characters and I was so invested in them having some sort of happy ending. I was expecting kind of a like rising from the dust and making it like to America or something and having like that kind of trajectory and it did not <laughs> and I was so sad by where the story went um, but it was a really good story and it was one of the most standout pieces of the thing for me. Um, the first story where I noticed within the story that it was referencing previous ones in case you want to kind of see a timeline of any of that uh, was reading Between the Pool and the Gardenias. Um, that one specifically references I think like the very first story in the collection and then some like character names uh, from other characters and stories as well. And so that was my moment of, oh, this is so cool that it's like a self-contained story and they're all self-contained, but they're also kind of referencing each other and giving you kind of like that family bloodline, which it was just such a cool connection to draw within the stories. Um, the next one that I really liked was called Seeing Things Simply. This one was about a girl who's an art model for someone from Paris, and I really just loved the description and things within the story. I feel like all the writing and imagery within the story very much matched the title of Seeing Things Simply and just kind of giving you this day-to-day -day of this girl and seeing kind of how her dreams and things are shaped by the people around her and it was just really beautiful. I, I really loved that one. Um, and then also the last one that I wanted to make note of was called Epilogue Women Like Us where it felt less like a story story and more like an autobiographical story. I'm not positive if it was um, but it was talking about a girl who has this history of mothers and grandmothers and all of that who are like the housewives working in the kitchen and stuff and she has the dream of being a writer and she ha 
takes to the pen and she writes and she can't help herself writing and like the disappointment of the family that she's not following kind of tradition and she's going off on this and I didn't have like that kind of background in my family. They weren't like upset that I like writing and stuff, but it felt very personal to me too, being a writer and seeing like, yes, sometimes you just have to take up that pen and you can't help yourself and you just have to write. And that feeling was very familiar to me, even if like our histories and backgrounds were not the same. So I thought that piece was really beautiful too. Um, but yeah, it was it was just great. <laughs> I loved the concept of this being kind of like a family line being told through it. It more than just that last piece, but throughout because it felt like you were getting that one generation felt almost like autobiographical. I don't know specifically from the little bit that's mentioned in the author's note of these are specifically based on like specific stories that were within like the author's family or anything but it felt like they could have been and I thought that was really cool it was just a unique experience I have never actually I don't think read through a full short story collection just completely like I did with this one normally I kind of skip around between stories because something doesn't fit my tastes or I'm not really in the mood for something but this one, I wanted to read them all, and I read them all, and it was great, and I loved it, and I'm glad for that experience. So, yeah. Also, this might be the first time I've picked up a collection that's all by a single author. Well, that's maybe not true. I've read some, like, Ray Bradbury short story books. And maybe not entirely, but I've picked up those, and those would all be by one. But this is one that I can for sure say is a short story collection by one person that I've read all the stories. And I really liked being able to do that because it's a little bit of a different experience from how short story collections normally are, where some hit and some miss, but all of these hit for me. <laughs> so if you're looking for a fun short story collection, I highly recommend this one. I think it's a great choice, and... I highly recommend it, especially if you're looking like for some Haitian culture or something, which is a culture I hadn't really had a chance to get any background with before. I thought this was a fun introduction to all of that too. So I think that's all I've got for now. Feel free to leave your recommendations or your thoughts on this if you happen to have read it as well. Uh, but that's all I've got. This is the Umlaut Herper signing out.